everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how we can factor out the greatest common factor uh, out of given expressions. So to be able to do this assignment, you need to complete the exponential IXL, the, the IXL assignment that was about exponentials. Uh, you need to complete that one first because you're going to use the properties that you learned from that assignment in here. If you're struggling in there, or if you didn't do the assignment, which means you're about 50% of my students, uh, you're going to struggle with this one a lot. So the first thing that I, w I would suggest to you before attempting to do this is completing the IXL assignment that I assigned last week or the week before about the exponentials. Okay, let's get to it. Factor out uh, the greatest common factor. So for this, we need to first identify what the greatest common factor is which means the highest, the greatest thing that you can divide everything in this expression. So looking at here, uh, we have 4g cubed, right? That's our first term. So let's just 4g cubed. And then the second term is 6g squared. Well, let's just simplify these, OK? 4, you can break it down as 2 times 2, correct? And then g cubed is multiply the g by itself three times. What about 6 squared? 6 is 2 times 3. g squared is g times g. Now we are looking for the things that are in common, okay? They both have 2, right? Do each one of these have another 2? This one here has a 2, the first one. There's no other 2 in here, so that's not common, okay? I'm just looking for the common factors. 3 is not a common factor. 3 is a factor of 6, but it, it's not a factor of 4. So we do not take this one here and that one here, okay? We just ignore them. You don't need to cross them out, but just to tell you what it is. So we have, <coughs> my bad, we have a pair of Gs in here and in here but that third one does not have its pair in the other one so the f common factors are 2 and g and g so the common factor let's just greatest common factor of the two terms or just look at one of them because they are the same anyways it's 2 times g times g that's how we find it we multiply all of the factors that we found to be common two times what is g times g if you multiply one thing by itself it's to the square 2g squared now that's the thing that i'm going to take out you can mentally do this process if you have enough practice you don't need to make this whole thing over here i never do that but i need to show you the process so if you have enough practice, you know what to do and can complete the process mentally. OK, back to our question. So the first thing is we are taking this out. Just to reiterate that, so I'm factoring that out. Here we go, 2 times g squared. What am I taking this out of? So I'm taking it out of 4g cubed. I'm going to do this on the side again. I am showing you what am I what I am doing. You don't need to do it just like this. If you can do it without writing everything down, it's okay. 4g cubed, I will factor out 2g squared. 2g squared. Combine the like terms. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. g cubed divided by g squared. If you have a common base with the expo exponentials, you subtract the powers. This was one of your Excel assignments. C 3 minus one, 2, keep the base the same, and subtract 3 minus 2 gives you a 1. To the first power doesn't mean anything. It's just like 2g. So that's what the first term is going to become. 2g becomes my first term. goes right here. That becomes my first term inside the parentheses now. And then it came out of 4g cubed. Originally it was 4g cubed. I factored out 2g squared and then it turned into 2g. Now, 
The second thing that I want to do is dealing with the second term. Originally, it was 6g squared, right? Let me kind of clear this space out. Okay. Uh, 6g squared. Let me kind of get these out of the way so I have more space. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is the second term. Let's simplify it. And then I am taking out 2g squared, correct? 6 over 2 is 3. g squared divided by g squared. It's like 5 divided by 5. 7 divided by 7. When you divide a term by itself, the answer is 1. And these are times. They are multiplied. It's product of 6 and g squared for the top. So 3 times 1, what is that? It's just 3, right? That becomes my second term. So the second term now is not 6g squared. That became 3. What about the sign in between them? This right here is the sign that you want to use originally. But if this one, if, that, if there's a negative in here, then you would put that negative in there too. Plus minus next to each other, it turns into a negative. But I don't want to overcomplicate the things. So far, all you have to do is bring that sign in between them down here. So that would be the answer to this question. 2g squared, parentheses, 2g plus 3. Moving on to the next one. Let's see. I think I'll do five or maybe six questions from this. Okay, 4q squared, 20q. Looking at the numbers, 4 and 20. Here is, now I'm kind of taking it a uh, one level up, and I will kind of use a shorter way, okay, for 4q squared and 20q. Let's look at the numbers. One number is 4, the other number is 20, right? And then for the variables, we have, let me just divide it, q squared and then q. Put the numbers together, put the variables together. What is the greatest number that you can divide both of them by? 4 and 20. I can divide them by 2, I can divide them by 4, but I cannot divide the 4 by anything greater than itself. So greatest number that I can divide both of these by are, is 4. So 4, my greatest common factor, is going to have the number 4. Because 4 is divisible by 4, 20 is divisible by 20, and if you increase it and try to divide the numbers, it's not going to work. Like pick 5, for example. 20, you can divide 20 by 4, but how are you going to divide the 4 by 5? It's going to give you a decimal, so it wouldn't work. Now, looking at q squared and q, what can you divide both of them by? I can divide both of them by q. So, I bring it down here. That's part of my greatest common factor. And when you have, let me just give you quick examples. Let's say you have x to the 7th and x cubed or y to the 4th and y to the 5th, y and y to the 4th. Okay, the greatest common factor of these two is x cubed. This one here is y to the 4th. That one here is y. I didn't make any calculations because there's a pattern in there. Whatever the low, you pick the one with the lowest power. That's go always going to become your greatest common factor when you deal with the same variable with the same base. The base should be the same. The powers could be different, should be different. And then you're going to pick the one with the lower number in the power. That's going to be your greatest common factor for the variables, okay? Now, moving on here, this is not 49. That's 4q, by the way. I will factor that one out. Let's start working. 4q taken out of 4q squared, right? So 4q squared, I'm going to divide this by 4q. And then I will divide the second term, 20q, by 4q. So these are going to become my first and second terms within the parentheses. 4 over 4, that gives you 1, right? Times q squared divided by q. q is q to the first power. You have the same base, which is q, subtract the power, 2 minus 1. So 1 times anything, you don't need to put that 1. It's like 1 times 3 is 3. You don't put that 1 times anyways. So just ignore that 1 times. It's q to the power of what's 2 minus 1? It's just 1. But you don't, you don't want to put q to the first power. It's just q. Then again, 
if you all, if you have seen that it was going to be Q, don't mind my steps. I need to show it for those who doesn't know what's going on. But if you see what's going on, you don't need to do it like step by step like this. So the first term becomes Q. Let's do the second one. 20 divided by 4 gives me 5. Q divided by itself is, they will cancel each other out when we do division. But here is why they cancel each other out. Normally, when you divide Q by Q, it gives you 1. But this is multiplication. You don't need to put 5 times 1. It's just 5. It doesn't disappear. It's already in there. But it's kind of pointless to put it in there. That's why we keep saying that they cancel each other out. No, they don't cancel each other out. It gives you times 1, but it, it, it's going to be the same answer. That's why we use the term, they cancel each other out. I don't want to mislead you. They don't cancel each other out, but they're going to kind of disappear. So the second term is going to become 5 within the parentheses. What about the sign in between them? That's my sign. So this would be my answer. 4q, parentheses, q minus 5. Moving on to the next one. <coughs> okay. So 10 and 40 are my numbers. 10 and 40, uh, the greatest common factor of these two, you can divide both of them by 10. Anything greater than 10 would not work, by the way. Okay, just keep that in mind. And the variables are m cubed, m squared. So the greatest common factor of these two is m squared. So you want to multiply these together to find the greatest common factor of both of these terms it becomes 10m squared. That's the thing that I will factor out. Okay, let's get started. 10m squared will be taken out of 10m cubed. So 10m cubed factor out or divide by 10m squared. Tens will cancel each other out, but remember they technically they don't cancel each other out. It's times one. M cubed over m squared, subtract the exponent. Three minus two is one. M to the first power is just m. Okay, so that's my first term now. Let's do the second one, 40m squared. 40m squared divided by 10m squared. m squared over m squared, it's times 1. 40 over 10 is just 4. So that's my second term. The sign in between them is plus. Let's keep it the same. Let's do one more. Okay. 11, 33, and 11. So those are my numbers. 11, 33, and 11. I can divide all of these numbers by 1 and then by 11. That's it. I cannot divide them by any other number. So if you're good with math, you can see those. If not, you'll need to grab a calculator and start to do some divisions, okay? Start from 1 and then keep increasing the number that you divide by, and then you'll find the highest one. So, and let's check the variables out. m to the ten power of 10 to the power of 9 to the power of 8. 8. Okay. Now, the smallest one is your answer always. So, multiply those together. Your greatest common factor, oops, my bad. Your greatest common factor would be 11 times m to the power of 8. That's the thing that I'm factoring out. Okay, 11 m to the 8th. So let's check this one out. It's going to be 11 over 11. There's going to be no numbers. Look at the power to the 10th. This one is 8th. Okay. 10 minus 8 is 2. 10 minus 8 is 2. Keep the base the same. That's your exponent. The second term, 33 divided by 11. It's like divided by 11 for all of these numbers. It's 3 m to the power of 9 divided by m to the power of 8. Since we are dividing, just subtract the exponents. 9 minus 8 is 1. I don't want to put m to the first power. It's just m. So let's just keep it that way. Look at the last one, 11 over 11. No numbers because it's, it's going to be 1 times whatever. I don't want to put that 1 times in there. And then it's m to the power of 8. And I will divide it by itself. m to the power of 8 divided by itself is just 1. So that would be the answer to this question. So that's all for this video. Probably it's been a lot longer than I expected. So I don't want to do another one. If you figured out thus far, I believe you can go as high as you want. 
uh, let me know if you have any questions guys thanks for watching and I will see you in another video